The movie is basically about um, our test subject. He's basically in a white room and the people in control are really just manipulating him. My name is uh, Michael Hickey. You have to read that. <laughs> In my notes, I played um, Test Subject 025. The character himself doesn't have an identification, just no idea of who he is. And throughout the film, he really tries to maintain a sense of reason. We really wanted to show the character kind of just losing it. We got that through our uh, cinematography. Hey, my name's Arthur Swarinski, and I was uh, director of photography on White Walls. What I was most worried about was the space that we're working in. The space was 16 by 24 by 10 feet. You're confined, you know, and you got to think of how to get creative in such a small space, and that's it's very, very difficult. I remember like going home after a couple of shoots and just being really frustrated because it hit me later on, like, okay, how could have we done something different. I had to say that this was the most punk set that I've ever been on. You know, everything was DIY. We built the set from the ground up. You know, something I had never been a part of. And I think that's what really makes this project unique, was building everything from scratch. We put so much effort building this set, and all of a sudden these village people uh, come out of nowhere, tell us to take it down, because we didn't have a permit for what we were doing. They put a Let's stick her up like you can't, you know, cease and desist and we're like, well, what's going on? It was a bummer to tear down the set, but I think it was also a good thing for us only because we did have some leaks and I think the second time it got back up, uh, the set was a lot stronger. After that, I mean, it was no stopping us. We're on a tight schedule and we uh, pulled through. We did have problems with their neighbors. We were doing the hickey screaming shots. White balls, shot 14, scene two, take one. Mark. He would go, what is this shit? Cut to clip. This has to be something else. And then he would go, ah, I know what you're doing here. And all of a sudden you would get calls from the neighbors. Hey, uh, Mike, you guys are being a little too loud. Let me out of here. Mike and Tom drew out storyboards for me, so I kind of knew the vision that they were going for. They entrusted me to take those storyboards and kind of make them come alive. Shot one, scene seven, take three, Mark. We wanted to get this 360 shot of the entire room after it was after Mike had painted it red. And originally, we were thinking to put it on the dolly and just move the camera around a single access point and we, we just couldn't get the right effect so we had to go get a jib. The jib move had to be very precise when we ended on mic and it was just a, a very choreo choreographed scene. It was like a dance, we were dancing. Of course, we, we dance with the lights, the cameras, and but I'm talking in a cinematic fashion here. The blood is um, more of like a fascination for him. That kind of explains what's um, wrong with his character. It hints at what his like uh, condition is. I decided to paint the room red. I had to. The white was piercing through me, slowly. Killing my eyes. Once he has that blood out of him, that's the first thing that goes to his head and he says, that'll make it better. They always say, think outside the box, but here I am inside the box, you know, and shit just hits the fan. I soon started to realize after a couple weeks on the set that the atmosphere really changed. There's some kind of vibe that we're, we're all kind of getting and even Mike, as an actor, he, he was going through nightmares, man. I would go home and fall asleep, and i just dream that I was in that room. I really didn't know if it was a dream. I I think you guys should really consider doing that roll, roll off in reverse. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's take another direction with this thing. I'm good with it. Anyone else? 
I think it's good. Okay. Is it wrong? My name's Sam Fell, and I was the ADR recordist for White Walls during post-production. My role was pretty much to record the narrative uh, being spoken by uh, Mike Hickey, as well as some of the whispers that happened. Also to re-record a room, re-record a space for that live action that's going on. This has to be something else. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like we found it. Yeah. Yay! We recorded with two uh, ribbon microphones and a stereo pair, figure eight as well as a hypercardioid uh, condenser microphone to give us that real feel of the character. The strongest point is um, that this character that they've been watching the whole time really has no control over anything that he's been doing. We do want to see him, you know, get out of that kind of manipulation and be his own person. And hopefully we can explore that in the next one. Being on that set, we fed off of each other. We fed off of each other's energy. And there was hectic times, you know, there was times when we were angry and the times when we were really, really tired. If you have a, a good team that you're working with, it's just important to trust one another and believe that they're gonna do what's best for the piece. Check out the movie, go see it. And uh, yeah, talking to you, go check it out, for sure.